discuss how dating works in today's social media age. We're going to discuss questions such as, has social media ruined dating? And what is the biggest mistake you see in women when it comes to dating? And what is your favorite dating app? So let's jump into this. For those who might have missed our first recording, let everyone know a little bit about Ariana and what you do and what you're up to these days. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you introduced me so kindly, I'm Ariana. Um, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, but I live in Austin, Texas at the moment, um, and I work in business consulting. Um, so I've dated in a couple cities across the U.S. now, whether it be back home in Seattle, uh, during college in New Orleans, and now um, in Texas, in both Austin and Houston. So we're we're adding all these things together, and we're going to see what we come up with today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. The last episode was awesome. And if you missed that, Bravehearts, make sure you go check that out. So let's jump into today's topic. We're talking about dating, how dating works in today's social media age. And do you have a favorite social media app? And if so, which one? Favorite social media app is definitely probably Twitter. Um, Twitter, I mean, if you've been on it long enough, you've been able to see the transition like mirror a lot of political movements. Mm -hmm. And the Twitter that we're on today is not the same Twitter that was originally available. Um, all I tell people is, you know, Twitter doesn't come with trigger warnings. <laughs> you know, you could see one post that is just the nastiest thing you've ever witnessed in your life. And the next could be from a registered psychiatrist, like remember to drink water. So it, <laughs> it depends on what you're looking for, but I'm sure it's on Twitter. Mm -hmm. For real. I love Twitter. Twitter has, uh, yeah, I love Twitter. Do you have a favorite dating app? And if there's any one in particular, which one stands out to you? Yeah, so I feel like I've been on a lot of dating apps, some of them just to kind of see what what was out there. But my mm. favorite by far is Hinge. Um, case like the, the main reason for that is because I feel like you're able to customize a little bit more about what you're looking for for free without having to buy any additional like premium. Mm. And then, of course, I'm sure, you know, like Tinder has become like synonymous with hookups only um <laughs> so for me I'm like I, I can't even have that app you know so hinge by far is the mm -hmm. best Hinge, hinge yes I've heard of hinge I've heard, I heard a pretty couple of good things about hinge um and you know of course I've been out the game for a little bit so I'm just like <laughs> gotta get your boy hip to a couple of things you know yeah, you just kind the of, horror stories yeah yeah right because we talked about some of, well we'll talk about that later on in the show I don't want to give it all away uh has social media ruined dating see that's a tricky one mm -hmm. um and even in looking at this questions before this conversation that was one that I was like mm, I'm not say if I'm not sure that I can say yes it has mm -hmm. without providing any other context right? right it's not so much that I think social media has ruined dating mm -hmm. as much as it has turned dating into a commodity you know people date as if they're going to pick up toilet paper you know like oh, I might as well you know I'm on the way I might as well just go hook up with somebody date somebody right and I've talked about this with my mom you know some of my older aunts or younger aunts and they're just like you know in their experience when dating when they were young dating always had a purpose like each person you dated you liked them enough to be like okay you know I could I could be with you mm -hmm. and the people that you had a one night stand with or hooked up with whatever Mm -hmm. A, wasn't common enough. And B, it was not someone that you would tell people that you were dating. There was a very different naming system between that and what dating is. And I think that is what social media has kind of contributed to, is blurring that line between actually dating someone and then creating all these other little phases in between that, you know, talking and then FaceTime. Like, let's just call it what it is, you know? So that I think is what social media has impacted the most. Mm, I like that mm -hmm. because so, so what you're saying is there's so many different options when it comes to say, say if you're just talking to, to two people, mm -hmm. are they like categorized now? Like this is my hookup or this is my 
date friend, like the social media kind of, if, if, if that makes sense, like, does it give you that many different options when it comes to social media uh, dating apps? I think social media obviously is like in, in large part, like a visual has a lot of visual currency. Right. And so I think what happens is like social media has impacted those naming conventions of what's dating, what's courting, what's talking, whatever the case may be. Right. When it just used to be, I'm dating you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I really like you enough to want to marry you. So I'm going to meet your family and they're going to tell you whether we can continue and eventually marry. Right. Mm -hmm. Nowadays it's like, well, I can't post a picture if I'm just talking to him, (laughs) you know, so we need to be dating. And if we're dating, then we might as well get engaged, you know? And it's like, well, well, hold up, wait a minute now. Let's let, that's why everybody's in these situationships. (laughs) So I, I think it's more of, people feel like they need to have something to show for the communications they're having with somebody. And in an effort to have, oh, I think they're more likely to go past those red flags and try and jump into what everybody can call, you know, dating or being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting because I remember when I was first talking to my wife and she was like, uh, you know, I, I looked at us. I'm like, hey, we we like official, right? She like, yeah, but I don't know if I'm going to share you on social media yet. And I was like, I, I was I was tripping. I was like, wait a minute. That's a big thing. That is like a big thing nowadays. I feel like there was a point where you could just ask somebody to be your girlfriend or boyfriend and it was sweet. But now... It's like once it's, it's, it's cemented in whatever social media they use, that's when other people have no choice but to acknowledge it, right? Because he said, she said, can be whatever. But once he does the post with the international players out, anthem is back, break, break, just breaking hearts left and right, up and down the TL, getting hit with strays. It's a lot. <laughs> and it's Not all the international players anthem. Yes. Oh, that is funny. Not the international players anthem in the background. That is too funny. <laughs> I didn't know it was a, such a thing. And even with your status on social media, you know, single, like all that stuff, the game has totally changed. But I kind of understand why on mm-hmm. one front, right? Social media has, you know, enticed all of us to put everything that we're doing in our lives online. And The part, even though it's curated, right? Mm -hmm. It leaves one to wonder, like, what parts are you leaving off, right? Probably the parts you don't want people to see, right? Maybe some things you're insecure about, maybe some things you're still working on, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But if this is your partner and you're supposed to love them out loud, why wouldn't they just naturally be a part of your content, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that leads into a whole lot of other situations of, I didn't know he was taken or I didn't know she was talking to so-and-so. Well, how would you know? Right. She didn't she didn't put her memo on Facebook. I'm talking. This is my current roster. You know, <laughs> check your position. We'll be doing drafts in a couple of weeks, you know, so it's 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 a battlefield. Yeah, my God, that is a lot. Yeah, because I, and, and I've even gotten on the game where I see people. They, uh, they will scroll down somebody's timeline. And again, all this is new to me because I'm a content creator. I don't have time to do the search and, and all of the stuff. I'm, I'm good. But I've noticed how people, they will scroll on people's pages and be like, well, I don't see no man. You know, and I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, well, this- I, mean, well I mean, technically, <laughs> you know, if, for example, if you were to look at a resume and didn't see a job listed, I, I, how am I supposed to know you work there? Mm got you <laughs> that's, all, that's all i'm saying but I'm, I'm, healed. I'm healed i'm not running the streets like i used to i'm sitting on the porch just observing but yes mm. <laughs> just sitting on the porch observing <laughs> i hear you i hear you yeah i'm getting on I'm, I'm you know i'm a little bit older but i'm learning i'm a student to this <laughs> It, it doesn't stop when you get older, though. I can tell you that. It, it doesn't. I was looking at some research on a Pew Research Center, and they're saying that in one in three partnered adults say they have looked through their current spouse or partner's phone without their knowledge. How do you feel about that? Hmm. It's kind of tricky mm-hmm. because I feel like I've never had an experience where I had to go through one of my partner's phones. Okay. They've never made me feel insecure about 
where they were, what they were doing, or their loyalty to our relationship or to me personally. Mm. So that's just not a concern that I've had, but it doesn't mean that I'll never have it. Right. Mm. Um, And so I guess the biggest thing with that is if you're going to breach someone's privacy and go looking for something, usually it's for a reason, right? Maybe that person did something that made you go, "Mm, I feel like something's amiss here. I would recommend talking about that with that person first. Mm -hmm. Based on their response, if you you still have that feeling and you decide to go through the phone, the most important thing is that whatever you find, you're willing to stand on it, right? If you are a person who went into this relationship saying that these are my boundaries, these are what I will and won't tolerate, Mm -hmm. and you find something in that phone that directly goes against that, don't look through the phone if you're not ready to step, Mm. okay? Because if not, I can understand why men and women are both, you know, both come up with the idea that, you know, if you look for something, you're gonna find it. That's not true, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've been looking for a million dollars in my couch since I bought it, it's not there, (laughs) right? Because it's not there. If there were, I would have found it. However, you have to be ready to have enough integrity and self-respect to do what you said you were going to do if this was the situation, right? When you were mad going through that phone and you said, oh, I bet not find this or I bet not find that and you found it, mm. you bet on it, it's time to go. Mm. Um, and, and if not, what does that send to the other person? What does that say about yourself, right? Mm. 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 It, if, you, if you're ready to have that conversation with yourself or you're ready to pack your bags and, and be done, then go through the phone. Because at that point, you're just looking for confirmation of what you already know. Mm. that confirmation bias yeah you already going into the mindset that i know he talking to somebody or you know yeah and, and you know this is on the evidence i'm not talking about the people who go through the phone and they're like oh i saw a picture and there was a piece of an acrylic nail in the corner <laughs> right yeah girl relax you about <laughs> to get left okay but for the people who go through the phone i've you know i've been in the room when my friends went through the phone and was like mm. Mm. I like them to save them on that one. Mm. I can't even save them on that one. I think a guy's favorite thing is I didn't text her. She texted me. I've never known a woman to just send nudes <laughs> un- just randomly at 6 a.m. That's a y'all thing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't cheat. She's smart. Now she help you out. But. At 6 a.m., the nudes early in the morning, huh? The good mo- the good morning nudes. Right. I'm like, no, nah, this is fishy. That's too much of a grand rising. This is fishy. <laughs> That's too much of a grand rising. Yeah, I'm like, no, mm-mm. can't even save you, pimp. Sorry about it. I bet it's a grand rising. You sent some uh- pics. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. So it, it, especially for men it's like don't do nothing on social media because as a woman we're trained detectives we're going to find it whether we go through your phone or not you know and, and I agree because and like I said there's so much stuff that I've learned but even when I'm on social media I'm like um should I tweet this maybe not maybe I should like there are some things that I'm just I, I have to almost think twice because I'm like I don't want to send the wrong message, but you know, people going to always interpret things how they want to. So I realized that you can't please everybody, but for, for the brothers out there, I just wish they would stop falling for the okie dokie in 2022. I wish they would have a little more integrity about themselves. I'm like, look, you're going to get caught. Um, she's going to put you on blast if this thing not working. Just have some integrity about yourself. You, you don't have to send the, 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 you know, the man picks, if you know what I'm saying. You don't have to send all that stuff. You know, have some integrity about yourself because I see people on the timeline, they, yeah, but your husband, and and I even see people now, nah, they they putting the DMs on, the, on their public timelines. Like, yeah, this your boy though. And I'm just like. I know, and imagine having to be, you know, got Twitter in your divorce court proceedings. Ooh. Not a fun time. You know, that's not a good, that's not a good time. Depending on the state you're in, could be a very even worse time. Um, And I think that especially when it comes to breaching the privacy or feeling some type of way, like I said, this all stems from insecurity. So what are you doing to make your partner feel insecure about the relationship so much so that they feel like they can't even ask you about it because you're going to lie because something is going on, Mm -hmm. right? 
Mm -hmm. Um, when I tell people, oh, I've never had to go through any of my partner's phones, which I mean, I haven't had many boyfriends, but nonetheless, um, they're just like shocked. Or if I tell people, you know, cheating has never been an issue in my relationships. Oh, that's because you don't know what was going on. No, that's not why. It's just because that wasn't a part. That's when I say that's something I don't do. Mm -hmm. Once I even get a whiff, I mean, a tizzle in this eyebrow, out the door. Mm -hmm. So move how you move. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I have a question to ask you now that we're here, because and as I listen to you talk, so are you saying that can you just pivot on a dime and drop a relationship even if you really love this guy? I have surprised myself with my own integrity at times. I kid you not. Like, yeah. dang, are you? Oh. And that's another thing. Like, social media makes it so much easier sometimes to cut somebody out of your life mm-hmm. with a simple block, with whatever the case may be. Um, I think for me, everybody has boundaries, right? Yeah. And there's like some hard no's that I think everybody has. Like, I'm sorry, no. Mm-hmm. And there's some things like, mm, that's going to take a lot for me to try and work through. For mm-hmm. me, infidelity is one of those things, um, you know, along with a few others. But once those hard no's are crossed, mm-hmm. I don't, I wouldn't be able to respect myself if I stayed. I'm not going to respect you. So now it's just like, what are we doing this for? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I just can't do that. Yeah. I hear you. And like you said, you got to have the boundaries because, you know, people, they they will run all over your boundaries if you don't let them know. So I, I hear you. And you got to stand solid. That's all I can say. Yeah. And put some respect on your name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have a dating horror story from someone you met online? And if so, what happened? Oh, my gosh. There's literally so many to choose from. um oh goodness gracious okay I guess I'll um give us one that you even had to laugh at yourself like you even had to laugh like I can't believe he just said this or you know okay so I this was when I was on tinder and I think I may have mentioned this in the previous podcast about um just the guy I was on a date with and he admitted on the date that he basically lied about his whole profile and I'm just like you know, dumbfounded. Mm-hmm. He's asking me, you know, do you smoke? Do you drink? I'm like, no, nah, not really. And he's like, oh, I drank, but I didn't smoke at that time. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, well, yeah, I used to smoke, but I just quit. Okay, cool. And he was like, yeah, my, my dealer was, you know, putting crack in my weed. <laughs> wow. And, and, and I was like, oh, like, um okay is that like a different genre of weed that I don't know about (laughs) and he's like yeah he was lacing my uh weed with crack and it used to bubble when I smoked it but like yeah I just quit smoking like um two weeks ago now I'm sitting here like I I don't smoke crack (laughs) but knowing what I know crack does not give me the type of oh I just quit two weeks ago I'm good type of thing right because I feel like the crack epidemic might have looked a little different if that was the case. So now I'm sitting here trying to scarf down these tacos and reason with the fact that I'm on a date with a crackhead. <laughs> like, and I'm in college, so of course I'm going to finish my meal. I'm starving. It's the, it's the least I deserve. Yeah, right. I did not talk to him yeah. again after that and in, an, in a rush to get back to my dorm and tell my roommate that I just went on a date with a crackhead. <laughs> forgot to block his number the weekend comes and he texts me and I quote well it looks like you don't want to be my girlfriend so in a rush to basically get back to my roommate and tell her what just happened on this date I forget to block his number and he texts me a couple days later at you know and I'm just like caught off guard and he goes oh well you know since it looks like you don't want to be my girlfriend maybe we can just be friends with benefits so now my jaw dropped for a second time in like the past couple of days. And along with that, he sends a link to his personal Pornhub channel. And I'm like, oh, and my roommate, she's like, open it up, open it up immediately, right? So now <laughs> we're looking at it and I will not repeat what we saw, Yeah. but I can confirm it was crackhead behavior. 
<laughs> so he literally had a he hold on, hold on. He literally had a Pornhub link. Like he actually was on Pornhub. Yes. Crazy. Yes. Face in the videos. <laughs> doing doing very much drug. <laughs> wow. And Pornhub let that on there, huh? I said after that I, I did take a break at the time you know I was like serial dating on tinder mm-hmm. um I've had dates that were just like so weird that like I left in the middle I've had dates where guys were just rude for no reason um case in point the guy that I met on Facebook dating actually recently invited me over for a barbecue sound like a great idea to me mm-hmm. um said he was gonna be at the pool grilling he's a chef sounds great mm-hmm. Um, I get to the location. I'm looking for the pool. It's a kiddie pool. It was marketed as a barbecue. It's just me and him. Oh, at the kiddie pool. And I'm like, what is going on? Is, is this retrograde? Is this what this is? Because how did I get duped into this? Oh, my God. And you know me, I'm always going to leave with a plate, but good golly. <laughs> the kiddie pool, I know I'm sm- I'm short, but I can swim. Yeah. That was rude. <laughs> oh, my God. So you did get a plate. I'm always going to get a plate. I think it's the least I deserve after the crack activities, the kiddie pools. Minimum. Minimum. <laughs> was the food good? It was good. The food was good. Okay. Well, I mean, you know. Food was seasoned well, I guess. You know, I guess. I guess at least good. you could. You didn't have to fill up the pool too much. It's about twenty minutes, so yeah. <laughs> oh my God! You should write a book. I plan to. Uh, my memoirs are going to be a bestseller. I'm sure. Uh, I'll have to wait a couple years on that. Wait for a couple NDAs to expire. Mm. You know, so we can get the real tea out there. But yes, it's coming. It's coming. I will get my purchase. I'm, I will buy my <laughs> copy because I only can imagine all the other ones that we don't have time to tell, you know, so. <laughs> yes. Let me know if you want to do the, the, the serial dater special. I'll be here. That will be live. I'm, I'm all down for that because uh, some folks need some help out here in, the, in these dating streets. Yeah. <laughs> What's the big, what, you, what is the biggest mistake you see women make when it comes to dating? Mm. The biggest mistake I see. Uh, I would say it is creep. Hmm, how do I say this? I think, I think it's just the falling in love with potential, mm. right? Um, I think women should start judging the book by its cover. Mm. I think women on the first date, don't ask him his five-year plan. See what he's been doing for the past six months. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Look at this person for what he is right now in front of you. Mm -hmm. And if it meets what you want to do for at least the next year, right? Mm -hmm. If you meet a person who's like, hey, I'm down and out right now, but I have all these great ideas. That's probably not the right person, right? Because you have great ideas and you're not down and out right now. So in order for you to get those great ideas to become real, you need someone who can help you, right? And if this person is in such a place where that's going to require all of your time and energy just to get them to where you are, who's to say that when they get to where you are, they're not going to want somebody better? Um, And on top of that, not just from a perspective of the Kanye West, you know, when you get on, you leave your white girl, but even more so on the front of when people have better and they know better, they do better, right? And sometimes on this journey in relationships, you realize that a person was willing to put up with you when you gave them every red flag in the book. Not just that you didn't have a car or a job, but you really were not a good person. Mm -hmm. And they, in being with you, really didn't respect themselves enough to wait for the right person to come along. And that I think for both men and women is something that can change. You could have helped me get out of the worst situation, right? Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, A, I don't want you to have to be able to throw that back in my face. And B, you start to question, 
why were you messing with me in the first place? And I know it sounds crazy to say that after someone has helped you, but it does make you stop and think like, did you see the potential in me? Or were you dating for security? Were you dating me because you wanted somebody to be loyal to the resources you were offering? Mm. Right. Um, I think that's something people don't consider in those dynamics. So just don't, don't fall in love with potential date. The person that is in front of you. Um, and women, please, it, 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 it's a red flag. If it's not a green flag, it's red. Ain't no such thing as yellow, orange, nothing. It's red. And if your girlfriends, your friends don't like him. Mm-hmm. Please. Mm-hmm. On, on both sides. I've even seen dudes. Dudes friends will be like, she's weird. I don't like her. And then she does something weird. And it's just like, oh. mm. you said something that was very interesting. You said you talked about uh, the dating for potential, but you were saying dating someone like where they're at in life. Mm-hmm. Because I seen a video. I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe it was about three weeks ago. I think it's on the shade room or something. This lady, uh, Six the Goddess. Um, did you hear about that when she talked about how men who don't have their finances together date big girls? Did, did oh yeah, you see that mm-hmm. I saw that. What are your thoughts on that? The first thought I saw when I said that was like, well, yes men tie a lot of their security to their finances, right? Mm -hmm. Because men are socialized that masculinity is based solely on your brute strength, your ability to procreate Mm -hmm. and your ability to provide financially for your family. Mm -hmm. That's that's what men are raised to believe is a man. If you can do those three things, you're a man. If you can't do one of them, you're not a man, right? But there's so much more that it takes to be a good partner, to be a good person than to just have a steady job, a working member, you know what I'm saying? And be able to fight. There's so much more. And so I do agree on one point that men maybe who are insecure are willing to just like anybody is date someone who may not be as attractive to them or to who they feel like they want to show off, right? Because they feel like this person isn't going to embarrass them or call them out for their lack of progress, right? Mm -hmm. However, where I disagreed with her Mm -hmm. is that there's an idea that big women or bigger women are cool with that, know that going into it and are looking for that same type of thing. Mm -hmm. That, That bigger women, just because they're bigger are going after men who have less because you know what I'm saying? That's where I disagree because, um, I've had several people learn the hard way. When it comes to your man, don't ever think he won't leave you for somebody who has 180 pounds on you. Because mm. she can cook. <laughs> I, I'm going to cheat on you. Shoot, I'm your friend and I'm going to go over there. Because <laughs> so you will get a plate. Yes, don't break your heart. <laughs> thinking that a scale, right? Because remember what I said, men are conditioned to believe that their brute strength is a part of their masculinity. Mm. Girl, you weigh 90 pounds. You ain't heavy. Ain't nothing cool about that. That? Why you think he's bench pressing? Why you think he's squatting 400? Mm. Mm-hmm. Not for you, girl. So <laughs> yeah, that's what that's why I'm just like, no. Oh big women can get who they want. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, because I think a lot of it comes down to your confidence. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just in how your confidence and how you carry yourself because I, it is kind of bad that you will put somebody in a in a certain bracket. You know what I'm saying? So I think men men like what they like. You know, some men like slimmer women, some men like heavier women. It just depends on what you like, you know, but to kind of put everybody in. I understood where she was coming from because she was yeah. talking about something about she was like, yeah, but if you look at his burner account, you don't look like the people he's looking at on his burner account IG page. And see, that doesn't even matter, right? Which, and that's what I thought was so funny about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. The conversation was that men who are financially insecure tend to show their insecurity in their dating practices. That should have been the end of the sentence, right? Because the reality is anybody who's insecure or doesn't have integrity or self-respect is going to allow things to slide that they shouldn't, right? You could be the most beautiful Instagram model. But based on the trauma you've experienced, you may not be able to accept or give love in a way that is responsible, reasonable, or something you want to see on social media. 
and broke men take advantage of those women too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. to think that, oh, it's just fat women that are so easy to get because they're fat and he's broke. That's not, that's not what the math is mathing at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just yeah. that, that I felt was incorrect, but I, but I hear you. Yeah. I just thought it was, I was like, huh, this is an interesting topic <laughs> yeah. in today's social media dating age. Yes. <laughs> are there any, uh, last piece of advice that you want to give to those who are watching when it comes to this dating in today's social media age, any piece of advice? Um, well, I think I told you in the last uh, conversation that, you know, I work with a therapist and psychiatrist and things like that, yeah. just to keep, you know, keep things interesting, really. Um, but I would recommend to everybody, whether you're a man or a woman, get to a point where you look in the mirror and you just picture yourself. I mean, like get to a point, look in the mirror and you're just like, I'm so proud of me. I look good. I feel great. And once I think you get to that place, it's so much easier for you to be in spaces with people like that. You get a new level of discernment that allows dating to become very curtain dry because you don't even see the BS that you used to, mm. right? So I would encourage everybody to get happy with themselves, date themselves, take yourself out on a date, take yourself out on a vacation, get a massage for you, do that for six months and your dating pool will change. Mm. I love that because I do believe we date according to our confidence. Mm -hmm. So I love And Beyonce is dropping this year on a fabulous day, might I add my 20th birthday. So I seen that on your, on your Instagram. I seen that on your reel. I, the queen has spoken so i have to, i have to follow accordingly what can i say oh uh, i seen that i was like oh she about to turn up for real <laughs> yes i'll try i'll try not to make it on the news i promise that's funny no it's all good hey, enjoy well ariana i want to thank you for uh i just want to acknowledge you for just continuing to grow and learn uh, despite of some dating obstacles that, you know, you're still hopeful that you don't come across as bitter or, you know, mad at the world or hate men and stuff. So I want to acknowledge you for that. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for like the wisdom that you have. I, I really appreciate that. And I also want to acknowledge you just for being consistent and uh, just walking in your purpose and doing what God has called you to do and just continue to press forward and just continue to stay confident and uh, have that sense of uh, uh, just the, 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 the funny things that you say sometimes. You have me cracking up on this show. So a lot of times I like bringing you on because sometimes just the fun <laughs> factor is enough for me. Um, but of course, you know, you give wisdom at the end of the day too as well and great pra practical tips. So I just wanted to acknowledge you on that. Um, Thanks. For sure. Brave Hearts community, make sure. Oh, also let everyone know how they can get in contact with you through social media. Um, I'm pretty sure all my social media is the same for like Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's Ari Punzel, A-R-I-P-U-N-Z-E-L. So feel free to follow. Um, the Instagram might be updated soon. I don't know. We'll see what the Queen Bee says. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, Brave Hearts community, make sure. You go connect with Ariana on those social media platforms. Also, if you are watching this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this video with a friend if they're in a dating process or they just need some wisdom in dating. This is the episode for you. If you are listening via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. Those who leave a rating and review will be in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. And make sure you leave those ratings and reviews and I'll give you a shout out on a show uh, podcast as well. So this is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach at It's Scary to Remarry with special guest. Ariana. All right, Brave Hearts community. <laughs> Take care.